I'm doing the Dollar Tree dollhouse makeover. I've seen people do this. Apparently it was big last year in 2021. I didn't see the videos until this year. And I haven't filmed anything <laughs> up to this point because I wasn't sure if anything would work. I still don't know if it's going to work. Hello, Nina here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm fixing up a dollhouse. I'm taking a cheap plastic Dollar Tree dollhouse and I will put a picture right there because I forgot to film that <laughs> before I went to town on fixing it. That's just, that's how I roll. <laughs> I was inspired by a bunch of people. This was a trend last year, I guess, in 2021. I saw people turning these houses into all sorts of different things. Haunted houses for Halloween, gingerbread houses for Christmas, Valentine's houses, Easter houses. Halloween is my jam. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I hope you'll stick around and check out the process with me because it's going to be an adventure. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going to happen until it happens. What I've done up to this point is obviously painted. It's no longer pink and purple. It's now gray and black. First I added Mod Podge to the paint. So like I mixed up some gray here. That darker one was the first color I used and then I went in with a lighter color on top and the black here. It's just regular acrylic paint. For the first coats, I mixed it with equal parts paint and Mod Podge. And then for the second coat, I decided to try equal parts paint and Elmer's glue just to see if it would stick better because the outside of the house is easier to paint than the inside. Because I think I want to do like a 360 diorama kind of thing. We'll see. I don't know yet. Anyway. The outside is easier to paint than the inside. Maybe if you're going to do this, take a, a nail file or a small piece of sandpaper or something to rough up the surface so that the paint takes better. Both the Mod Podge and the glue, though, have helped. The roof has two full coats of black. The outside has two coats of the dark gray. And then I noticed that there was still some pink showing through, and that's why I went in with the light gray. I think now, though, pretty much all the pink that I don't want seen will be hidden. Oh yeah, and I popped out all the windows and doors. I'm holding on to the green pieces because I think that's going to look nice and spooky. So I haven't painted those. All the other windows and the door frame I've painted black. I've also gone ahead and painted the TV black. The table, that's still wet so I won't touch it. The table legs and the underside of the table. One of the little dolls. I've painted her whole lower half. I think I'm going to peel the paint off her hands, but it was just easier to put it on there. So she's going to be wearing like a black dress. And then this little one has black hair. On the inside, like I said, this was really difficult to paint. The paint would keep bubbling. Yeah, so you can kind of see it on the inside of the the roof here. How it's kind of like bubbled and moved. Like the paint really doesn't want to be on that. So inside there's three coats of paint as well. Two of the dark gray and then one of the light gray. And I can still see some pink peeking through. So I think it's going to need even more. But that's okay because I don't think I like that like concrete look. So I'll probably age that a little bit more with more paint. I hope all of this stays. I hope it doesn't just like peel off. I'll have to see. I don't know if there's something I can spray, maybe like a spray varnish or something to set it. We'll see. This is, this is all trial and error. This is just a fun little experiment and I hope it works. Okay, then the next thing that I started working on are pumpkins. I found these cute little pumpkins and this adorable little set of hay bales. I found both of these at the Dollar Tree. 
as well as the house. And I thought, wouldn't these look cute in a little diorama? Might be too big, but you know what? That's cool. So they start off looking like this. Just a plain little pumpkin. Oh, and they have, they come with wire stuck into the bottom. So they can be like attached to wreaths or other decorations. You just pull that out and you've got a perfectly good miniature pumpkin. Now these are, I don't know what's on top. It's almost like a paper and it's foam inside. So it's almost like a paper covered foam, I think. The nice thing about that though is that they can be carved. So I took a little X-Acto knife. Please be very careful if you're going to be using sharp objects. I used a little X-Acto and I carved the top off and a little face. This is just like for show because it's going to just be glued back down. I didn't really have to do this part. It's not like I'm going to put anything inside it. I just wanted it to look that little bit more realistic. After that, I went in with neon yellow acrylic paint and I painted in the face and around the top so that when the top is back on, you'll have that like glow. And this foam is really easy to paint and whatever this paper stuff is on top is really nice too because if you're just trying to paint the inside and you get any on the outside, you just wipe it off. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of my second pumpkin. Let's see if I can do that on camera. This is really hard to do with miniatures because I have to watch what I'm doing not what I'm filming. So I might not be in frame. There we go. See, you just smush the paint and then, oh, I got a little on the outside and it just wipes right off. There we go. Pumpkin number two. I'll just set this little guy off to dry. And this is why I tend not to film the process of making things while I make them. Because a lot has happened between now and the last clip. And I didn't film any of it. That's mostly because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I, A, don't feel comfortable sort of explaining it as if it's a tutorial because I'm just farting around and finding out. But also it would be, I imagine, way too big of a headache to edit if I sort of filmed everything. I don't get paid to do this. So I don't relish the idea of sifting through like 30 plus hours of footage to, you know, shorten it down to a a more manageable video size. Okay, let's just jump in and I will explain what I did now that it's done. Okay, so the last things that I showed on here were these pumpkins. Well, jack-o'-lanterns now. You can see the yellow paint is dry. And then on top, what I did, underneath I painted the foam orange. Uh, you can't see it, but in case you did, then you wouldn't have like glaring bits of white. And on the top edges, I did like this wash of brown just to sort of age it. I might end up doing that a little bit around the face to give the faces a little bit more of a realistic look. But that's what I've done so far. Oh, and I glued these back in. So it really doesn't matter that I painted them because <laughs> they're not coming back out. But now it sort of looks like they've been carved hollowed out and that maybe there's like a light bulb or a candle or something inside. Let's start on the roof. It glares a lot on film. It's not quite this bright in person. After I finally put enough black on that no pink was showing, then I went in with dry brushing. So what I did is I mixed up a rust color. I made this using 
red, orange, brown, and a little touch of gold for just a little bit of a shine. And I dry brushed on these windows and then on this like metalwork and up here, just anywhere where I thought it would look like, you know, maybe this was metal that had rusted on an old house. I also went in with a little bit of light gray on the roof up here just to make it look like it's been a little bit worn. And I also used some green dry brushed just to make it look like maybe there's been some, some moss or mold or something growing on the house. Like I mentioned before, I kept the green on the windows, but I thought they looked a little too clean when I snapped them back in the roof. So I used some of the black paint and a little bit of the dark gray and just kind of dirtied them up. On this one, I also pulled out my X-Acto knife and cut part of the frame so it would look like, you know, maybe over the years kids have thrown rocks into the window and sort of smashed the glass out and smashed up the window. On this side, I still have the window. I left that intact. Now the windows are just a piece of acetate from packaging. And what I did to give it this sort of dirty frosted look is I used a little bit of glue and a little bit of this sort of murky pale gray with my finger and just spread it all over and then sort of dabbed it to give it like a, a dirty covered in fingerprints kind of look. Cut it out to fit the window and glued that in. And everything that I've glued in so far has been glued with tacky glue. I have not been using hot glue because I don't tend to have luck when I glue plastic to plastic with, with hot glue, it pulls off. The tacky glue seems to work pretty good. And that window has stayed in, so yay for that. Now the bottom of the house, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I used some of the rust color that I made and dry brushed the railings. Then I mixed up, um, actually no, I didn't mix it up. I used a dark green to just dry brush and just sort of flicked the paint like that just on the corners anywhere that like greenery I think would grow. I also went in with the light gray on the door frame and the windows just to sort of bring out the patterns on them because once I got these painted black they looked really really I can't think of the word. They, they didn't have much to mention. They, oh, flat. They looked really flat. So then I went in and dry brushed with the gray and just doing that sort of picks up all the raised bits so that you can see them more. I did the same thing with the door. Again, it it's not as neon as it's coming across on camera. It's more of a, a minty green in person, but I felt like it was too bright and clean. So I went in with both the light and dark gray. I just kind of dingied it up. The two side windows do not have any glass. I just felt like it would be too weird because the curtain poles are like attached to the frame and you wouldn't have glass behind the curtains. You'd have glass in front of the curtains and you just, you can't do that with the curtain poles like right there. So I just, no glass. Those have been smashed out already. What I did do though is after I snapped these back in, I put the boards up and to make the boards what I did is I took a coffee stir stick snapped a little bit off and snapped the rounded bit off like that and then used some wood patterned contact paper and just wrapped wrapped that up like so and then went in with black and gray and actually a little bit of brown I found painting it over with some brown to match the lighter popsicle with the contact paper that actually helped kind of murky this up so I used a little bit of brown black and gray to make the wood look sort of rotten and old like it's been there for a while 
And then for this plank, I used a little bit of gold to make little dots that could be like screws or nails or however they'd attach the planks. I did the same for this one and just sort of matched up the dots with where the frame of the window underneath is. On this side, I only have one nail. The other spots are just done with black for little black holes to show like empty spots where there would have been nails, but you know, over the years, punk kids and adventure seekers would have pried the board as much as they could away from the window. And, you know, maybe they climb in through there to see if the house is haunted or do seances or I don't know, whatever. I just thought that was, you know, a cool part of the story. And then to finish up these side windows, there I took some gauzy fabric and just glued it in. Doesn't look <laughs> like much on the inside, but that's okay. Uh, this fabric was too small to rip, so I just sort of cut and then frayed and just like rubbed between my fingers to sort of manipulate and make it look a little old and dingy. And on this side, I stuck a little bit through the window. I just thought that looked cool since there's no glass anyway. You know, a stiff breeze comes and blows the curtain right at the window. The two front windows have glass in them. The dirtied up acetate. And on this side, I don't know if you can see, oh, kind of, there's like scratches in this pane and up in this pane. I was hoping to like cut chunks out and make it look like the, the glass had been broken, but I ended up picking a thick acetate and my X-Acto couldn't quite cut through it. I mean, I could if I went over it a bunch of times, but when I looked at it and saw the little scratches, I thought those looked rather cool. So I went ahead with just cracks instead of actual broken pieces. Um, so that's that window. And then this window, I went a little bit harder on. I wanted a window that you could see where the glass had been broken, where, you know, people had thrown rocks through the window and busted things. So again, I took my X-Acto and cut chunks out of the frame. Before I glued the window in, I just held it in place and put little dots with marker where the frame was broken. And then I went in with my X-Acto blade and very carefully I just poked a little slit and then kind of spun it and, you know, gouged a little here, gouged a little there to make the hole. And I made sure to poke going in so that it would look like the glass was broken inwards toward the house. And then I glued that in and I decided not to put a plank on that window. I figure it's just been removed and busted. Once I put the door in, it scraped some of the floor, but I really like what that looks like. It does look kind of dirty and dingy and it doesn't quite close. So the corner is a little bit open. And then when that happened, what I ended up doing is ripping one of the planks that I had made. So, you know, busted. And then I stuck one down the way I wanted the planks to go and put the little nail holes. And the other one, I kind of put it askew with one nail hole and one empty hole. Because I figure, you know, again, if anybody is breaking into this house to do seances or see if it's haunted or, you know, do any ghost hunting, maybe they broke that plank and sneak in down here. And originally I was going to make this like a 360 diorama so you could see inside as well as outside. I've decided I don't think I'm going to do that anymore because when I started snapping the windows back in, it started to pull the paint away and it just looks really cheap and messy. Um, even though I did end up putting some other colors so I really like how the floor turned out. I did a little bit of dry brushing as well as copious amounts of paint to cover up the pink. And it ends up looking more like stone than just boring concrete. So I'm a little sad that that's going to be covered up. But I just, I don't know that the inside is salvageable to look as nice as I've been able to make the outside look. What I did do though is I had a chair that came with a set. I ripped the back off 
sort of cut a score and then use my pliers to pull that off. And I glued that under the window. Now I think this next step I'm going to need to use hot glue for. I think I'm going to glue one of these little dolls on top of that step so that from the outside you can sort of see her ghostly figure through the window. I think that'll be cool. And what I'm thinking of doing since I don't think I'm going to decorate the inside anymore, I think I might put a string of lights so it'll be a light up display. Since the last clip, so to get you caught up, the first thing that I worked on is this absolutely gorgeous tree. Is she not spooky? Oh, I love her. All I used to create this was pipe cleaners, fire, and paint. That's it. Because whether or not the internet is actually listening to, you know, our thoughts, because I didn't even say this out loud, whatever the reason, um, the video that taught me how to make this is like two years old. And I found it through an Instagram post by the same fella, like the same week that I was working on all of this. He just happened to post a video about making these trees, directing viewers to his YouTube channel for more information. It couldn't have turned out any more perfect. This is exactly when I needed this information. Anyway, so the creator's name is, well, his channel is Encounter Terrain, and I will link his video down below. It's super cool, literally. Pipe cleaners, fire, and paint. That's it. Then I decided I needed a base, and that's what this is. Basically, this was a Christmas sign, and you can still see part of the paper I had ripped off. This is just one of those um, sign plaques I got from Dollar Tree. And then I have covered it with felt, the felt, though, before I glued it on, the majority of it has been slightly needle felted. I had some extra, what's that, roving or whatever this stuff is that you'd use for needle felting. I had some leftover from a project I made last year and um, all the tools and I just kind of used the little needly thing to jab roving into the felt to sort of give it a grass texture. And then I may have gone a little ham with the paint. There's a uh, light brown, dark brown, like a gray brown, black, just to make it look all sort of dingy and grass-like. And there is a little area over here that I've started to work on. This is a little ball of felt underneath the grass to look kind of like a, a grave mound. And then I have a little pile here of dirt. This is coffee grounds that was mixed with glue and uh, dark brown and black paint. Cut a slit and then sort of manipulated it into a hole and filled that in with the glue and paint soaked coffee ground mixture. So we have like an open grave with a pile of dirt and a grave mound. I'm gonna make some headstones because I'm thinking the house will be sort of off center. The tree will be over here-ish. We'll have the little graveyard, the pumpkins in front of the house. And then I don't know if I'm going to use them yet, but in case I decide I need a little extra greenery, I took some of their little bottle brush trees that I got from Dollarama and I just hacked chunks off, shortened one of them, and then painted because they're made to look like uh, snow covered trees for little Christmas villages. I took some dark green and just painted over that snow. So that's where we're at so far. And the house is done. Uh, clearly I'm holding just the house because the diorama, she ain't finished yet. <laughs> Life happened. Uh, we had a cold and I had to mum. It's just 
when younglings get sick, that's what I have to do. That takes precedence over all of this other. So life paused for a little bit. There is no way I'm going to be able to get the diorama done before I would like this video to go up tomorrow. <laughs> so, because I don't want to rush it. I don't want it to just be good enough. I want it to be awesome. This is going to be incorporated into future Halloween decorations, I hope. So, yeah, I want it to be a good one. Therefore, I am going to show off the house in just a short while. Uh, right here, it'll get its reveal because that's actually, that's what I started wanting to do. It was just going to be the house. So, the video is still true to itself because <laughs> I went off the rails a little bit with the diorama and that was just a spontaneous <laughs> going overboard, taking things further than they needed to be. Actually, no, no, no. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to finishing all this. And I am going to, I think, debut the finished diorama over on Instagram as soon as it's done, which will hopefully be sometime this weekend. Fingers crossed. Like I said, I'm not rushing. I want to take my time. I want this to be good. Or at least, you know, as good as it can be. Because I'm using, like, inexpensive and garbage materials. Like, literal trash. So, I don't want it to look like trash. But that doesn't necessarily make it worse than if it was made of, like, high-quality stuff. I gotta stop thinking like that. Trash can be good, too. Anyway. <laughs> It's called a garbage can, darn it. <laughs> oh, I'm officially cracked. Anyway. <laughs> the diorama isn't done, and it will be soon, and when it is, I'm going to show it over on Instagram. So follow me over there if you want to see the finished diorama. In the meantime, I will show you the finished house. It gets a big fancy reveal. Well, as soon as I close out this video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, lovelies. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, maybe we're even inspired. Just because spooky season is over doesn't mean spooky season has to be over. The older I get, the more I... <laughs> My soul is... <sighs> affiliated with spooky season more and more the older I get. Yeah. Festive will happen. But until then, let's enjoy at least one more dose of Halloween. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay safe. Love you. Bye.